Mobile World Congress 2015 from sunny Barcelona. We are here in the Tech Lounge studio at the Intel booth. And I'm so glad to have Kirk Skogan over here. He's a senior vice president and general manager of the client computing group. Kirk, very nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. So it's going to be an exciting week over here in Barcelona. You just flew in from, uh, from New York. You just told me before. That was kind of cold over there, wasn't it? It was very cold. I like Barcelona much better. Thank oh, you. absolutely. <laughs> That's just the perfect time of the year, right? And now it's, they move it to early March right now, which makes it even a little bit warmer over there. So, I mean, you guys had a couple of announcements over here after uh, during your press conference here at the Intel booth. But, you know, what I really would love to talk to you about... Um, I know you especially since you were starting the whole Ultrabook campaigns during Computex like three years ago or the two-in-one campaigns, um, but there's another huge topic and this is wireless charging. I mean, this is the Mobile World Congress. We're talking about variables and mobile devices. So what's the, what's the state of wireless charging with Intel right now? I mean, you've been one of the pioneers in this industry. Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, we've tried to become an experiences first company. And uh, believe it or not, we do multiple hundred thousand end user interviews every year at yeah. Intel. We test over 800 concepts. And what's coming out at the top are three big things. One is people are sick of carrying around that bundle of wires with them. Uh, they're sick of their passwords <laughs> and, uh, and remembering their passwords. And then uh, they really would like to talk to their PCs in a more natural uh, way, either talk or gesture to their PC. So those are really the big user experience things we're doing. Uh, wireless charging is on the top of that list. Uh, and our job at Intel is to make that ubiquitous, right? We're one of the largest uh, standards kind of drivers in the world. Yeah. And so uh, I, I'd love to talk to you a little bit today about kind of how we think we can make it ubiquitous across wearables all the way to PCs. And I mean, we got some pretty big statements already over here with uh, Samsung launching their new Galaxy series, the Galaxy S6 and the S6 Edge, which comes with an integrated wireless charging. And I think that this is, That's well, right. for you guys, this is just absolutely perfect, having one of the biggest smartphone manufacturers and now going to embrace all the your ecosystem of wireless charging. That's right. Well, the biggest issue, let's start with standards, right? Because to make this ubiquitous, uh, we need to be a, a standards leader. So there has been three standards bodies, yeah. uh, WPC, uh, PMA, and A4WP. Uh, what we were excited about at CES is we announced the merger of the Power Matters Alliance and the Alliance for Wireless Power. And what that means is we'll be able to create kind of uh, multi-mode solutions, if you will, that'll support both inductive and resonance. Yeah. I think most people realize that resonance will be better long term because you can actually charge multiple devices together and you don't have that uh, really rigidity in the positioning that you do with inductive. Uh, today it's just a little bit more expensive and the standards are still getting closed, but I think uh, our goal is by the end of this year to have uh, our uh, Atom X5 and X7 tablets mm -hmm. and our Skylake or uh, next generation core PCs be able to be wireless charging capable. And so we plan to uh, be able to license our reference designs for the charge mats, yeah. uh, be able to go through two inches of wood. And we've already had some pretty significant announcements for proof of concepts with Hilton, uh, with Marriott as the, uh, one of the global hotel right, leaders, right. Jaguar Land Rover, um, San Francisco Airport, Emirates Airline. Uh, so some exciting people, you know, to kind of say a year from now, how do you get into the coffee shops, into yeah. your... Uh, airport lounges and and leave your power brick at home. Yeah, I remember that. I think you you've been showing um, this table with this two inches of wood during IDF about like two years ago or so. Right. And I think this was absolutely amazing. Um, I constantly think, you know what? I should go to an IKEA and buy a, a a table, and it should be all integrated because I mean it's a surface. Just yeah. can we make sure that <laughs> each and every surface has wireless charging? And this should be a goal for the future. Yeah, in fact, uh, we've worked with DuPont on their Corian countertops. And so I think if you go to, in the U.S., you go to Street of Dreams Homes, you yeah. can start seeing your kitchen countertops uh, with wireless charging as well. But I think what will end up happening is you'll, you'll go to the store and you'll get a, a charge mat. And mm -hmm. for a relatively low price, you can just put it under your right. office desk or your kitchen nook at home. And then, uh, you know, hopefully six months later, a year later, you'll go down to your local coffee shop or your airline lounge. And the same standard will be there that you had bought for home. Uh, what we're trying to do is make sure it's a scalable solution mm -hmm. so that we don't just have phone-only 5-watt solutions, but we can right. scale to 20 watts, 40 watts, 50 watts over time, and even be able to charge, for example, your uh, phone next to your Ultrabook 
okay. side by side, not just uh, up and down through the table, but also right. side by side, charging your phone off of your PC as well. I mean, we're talking about Ultravox. I'm using a fifth generation of the Core, and I have to tell you that I absolutely love it. This is the most <laughs> beautiful uh, laptop I've ever had. That's a new Dell um, uh, Inspiron XPS 13 with this um, amazing, they call it Affinity Display. So basically, they squeeze a 13.3 inch display into an 11.6 inch device. And it has an amazing battery life already. I can easily get like 10 hours out of it. Mm -hmm. But still, why? 10 hours, of course, you know, sometimes you want to play some games or you want to watch some 4K videos or whatever. Um, at the end of the day, you might want to recharge it. So this is now also coming to a clamshell, a laptop, an ultrabook form factor that in the future I will just place it on a table somewhere and I'm going to recharge it. Yeah, absolutely. So I think um, by the first half of the year, we should have covers for phones and tablets, either yeah. covers or sleeves. So you can use your legacy device and still have the cover or sleeve. Uh, over time, though, we again, with uh, Skylake, in the second half of the year, you'll start seeing it integrated now into, into clamshells uh, for the first time as well. So I, I think it's going to be uh, incredibly exciting. You know, a lot of people say, well, you have all day battery life today. Right. But we've all forgotten to plug in our notebook or our phone at night and you wake up and you're at 5% uh, and you've got to gotta, uh, go to a day of meetings. So I think, you know, if you go to the airline lounge, you go to the, um, you know, coffee shop, right. you go to the office, we want to have them embedded in all. And, and we do have history here, right? In 2003 with Centrino, we went out oh, and yeah. we certified all those hotspots. Yeah. We didn't invent Wi-Fi, we just yeah. made it ubiquitous. Yeah. And so we're one of many participants. You mentioned Samsung. Uh, while their phones today are um, PMA and WPC yeah. compliant, um, they are an active member of A4WP for resonance charging as well. And, uh, you know, we're working very closely with them to, to make sure resonance, I think, ultimately uh, becomes the standard, if you will, over time. You brought up a very good argument that we sometimes forget about recharging our <laughs> devices in the evening. Um, even though that we kind of got conditioned to this um, over, over smartphones, that we're going to connect them to our charger in the... In, um, in the evening, but it's constantly happening to me. And especially right now, <laughs> now that we have laptops that are lasting for more than a work day, right? And this is kind of this in-between zone that we don't know about because before that we've had laptops running for four, maybe six, seven hours. Now we have the laptops. Also, when, when you look at the new uh, ThinkPads with the additional battery of like 20 hours, mm -hmm. which makes it even more difficult for us to, to guess how long it will last. So there, there has to be a huge market for this, especially also, I think, in the enterprise uh, market. Well, that's right. I mean, I think if you vision over time, right, we still want our devices to also be much lighter, and battery yeah. is a big element of the weight of devices. So you can imagine if you're going on an international trip, I would love to be able to drop down the tray table yeah, yeah. and be able to charge off the tray table, oh, but have a perfect. very thin yes. device that was, you know, charging right off the table, right? I, what bugs me being there is you have the, the cable plugged in, even if you have charging in the airplane, and every and time you someone can't wants find to... It's somewhere in between the seats down there, right? That's right, and <laughs> when someone tries to get out and they're yeah. tripping over your cable, we just want to get rid of that. Um, but wireless charging is just one of a, a number of different technologies mm -hmm. we have. A wide-eye for wireless display, and now pro-wide-eye, a secure and managed way to yeah. do professional uh, enterprise-grade display in a conference room is coming. Uh, we're a standards leader on Open Interconnect Consortium for device-to-device -device communication. And then we've just launched our first uh, Y-Gig uh, wireless gigabit solutions for docking. So literally we're talking about with Skylake being able to deliver the world's first PC where you yeah. literally would not have to connect a cable. No cables for charging, yeah. no cables for display, no cables for docking, and no cables for device-to-device -device transfer. And a lot of these systems will now have integrated LTE into them as well. Absolutely. I would love to have this in each and every hotel room. I think that that's the biggest problem. Right? Right. Even though that they already upgraded the hotel rooms now with all these docking stations where you have all kinds of connector, HDMI and VGA and whatever. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I don't need this anymore. You mentioned something when you came to the market with Centrino 12 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. um, you kind of democratized the way of how we're going to connect to the internet and we, you kind of freed us from all these cables uh, right. with it yeah. and um, we're still not there when it comes to let's say um, when, when, I'm, when I'm traveling and 
also what you mentioned uh, on an airplane. I can, I can, uh, I have USB connectors right now on airplane. I can, mm -hmm. I can stream media files on a display right now. But I would love to have it all wireless right now. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, there's a lot of work to be done still, but uh, you know, I think a couple of years from now we'll be looking back saying, well, why did we ever connect yeah. a wire to something, right? And there's a lot of technology, a lot of user experience underneath. If you look at the professional wireless display, right? If you're going to hand off from multiple people in a conference room instead yeah. of trying to figure out the dongle to <laughs> connect to the dongle. I know at Intel, we, we waste constantly six, seven, eight minutes at the beginning of the meeting just yeah. trying to get the projector set up. Yeah. Uh, this new software we're putting on, whether it's Windows 7 or Windows 8, you can basically instantly hand off the display from one person on one side of the room to the other person on the other side of the room almost instantaneously. And we're using it now across all of Intel's conference rooms uh, for the executive staff, and it's working really, really nicely. So that's another one I'm, I'm very excited about. Um, we also talked about passwords. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I don't know if we can transition there, but uh, you know, what, what's frustrating is you see these password breaches. And if you are using a password, the chances are your password is the word password or one, two, three, four, five, six, or yep. ABC one, two, three. <laughs> Still the most popular ones out there. <laughs> yeah. So um, what we're trying to basically do is have you become your password, mm -hmm. where your face, your mm -hmm. fingerprint, your voice, or what we call multi-factor authentication mm -hmm. will enable you to log in not only to Windows, but mm -hmm. all of your websites. And so TrueKey now that we've announced is, is a way that we can use hardware technology and mm -hmm. software technology better together to ha basically have you, you know, log in with your, your face. And, you know, some people like it for, I think, the day-to-day -day mm -hmm. passwords that you use. Uh, I actually prefer it for the ones I only use a couple times a year because for me what's frustrating is, you know, that bank account you want to get into yeah. or that stock account or something. And you only go in there once every six months, but inevitably it's on the weekend and the bank isn't open when you want to get in and you can't remember your password and then they lock you out. <laughs> I think, um, you know, getting into passwords is another one that ranks very, very high on user frustration. So, Is this a development that's also based on the experience with a perceptual computing project because over there you've been using um, the 3D camera technology and you've been one of the pioneers in this market? Yeah, so, uh, you know, one, one of the things we're doing is... is uh, we want to ensure that you have the absolute highest levels of security. And so when you move from a 2D camera to a 3D camera, yeah. you can actually do, uh, I think, almost 50 points of uh, facial login. It can actually yeah. detect blood flow and blinking. So a lot of the early solutions, you couldn't, you know, you could put a video up in front of the camera and you could log in. Obviously, that's not going to work if this is going to become broad-based. So the 3D camera just makes it uh, so much more secure. Yeah. I remember that it was... So almost two years ago right now, uh, when you were showing a small version of the 3D camera module yeah. that's going into future Ultrabooks and uh, right. two-in-ones, and it's happening now, right? Yeah, so uh, we've uh, got three different camera technologies. So we have some that are what we call user-facing or front-facing, and those are for things like gesture, uh, for gaming, for security, uh, and this type of thing. And then we have for tablets and detachable two-in-ones and yeah. phablets, we have world-facing cameras, and they're... We're doing things like being able to uh, capture an object in 3D and then mm. print it out on a 3D printer. Yeah. Uh, you can do, we had Emirates Airline talk about wanting to uh, do a scan of uh, all of their uh, employees so they can fit their uniforms better. Oh, wow. Um, there's, uh, I didn't realize it, but every package that goes into an airline has to actually get physically measured. And they're yeah. actually doing yeah. that with a, a tape measure today in many oh cases. So now you can just literally point a tablet or a phablet at yeah. the package and instantly... Uh, get it measured, and the productivity increases, I think, for business will be yeah. really, really strong. So, yeah, so real sense, I think, again, we, we used to have those little uh, 2D cameras that sat on top of our, you know, monitors, and yeah. uh, within a few years, I think you'll see the whole world move to 3D. After, you know, the reason we have two eyes is because we see in 3D, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So this is pretty natural for the computer to go It was also, also amazing to see um, this in this new Dell tablet that you were announcing or showing during uh, IDF. Um, the camera technology and that was absolutely amazing. Yeah, I think, you know, that just goes to show you can make something super thin. Yeah. You know, the thinnest Android tablet in the world, and yet you can put 3D technology in there. And, and there we used kind of a... Uh, more of an entry 3D version where you can get uh, new photography capabilities. So you yeah. can do uh, 
basically a blur behind people that if someone accidentally walks behind your picture or something, you can blur that out, um, do different color schemes. You can actually do measurements there to see how high you jumped on a, on a ski jump or something yeah. or a, a skateboard jump. Um, so lots of new things you can do with photography there. So interesting to see how Intel evolved, especially in the world of mobile over the last couple of years, right? Before that, you've been mainly known for the average consumer out there as a ship manufacturer, mm -hmm. right? And now we're talking about camera technology. We're talking about wireless <laughs> charging and all of this. Must be some exciting times for you to work for Intel. Yeah, I think uh, I've been in Intel uh, 22 years and, you know, during kind of the Andy Grove era, we would build a new piece of silicon and we called it a software spiral. The software yeah. industry would kind of try to catch up to the silicon and we'd put out more silicon and we had this nice run. But we've really turned the model upside down now and we start with, okay, what, do, what are the pain points that users have and how do we solve them? Yeah. And that's why we got into this mode of let's get the wires out, uh, let's get the passwords out. And these are things that we think ultimately, you know, will be good for Intel shareholders as well because it will drive PC refresh. Um, you know, in two-in-ones, we saw that people didn't want to carry both a tablet for consumption and a PC yeah. for creation. We put them together, and now what we're seeing in the two-in-one category is people are refreshing their PCs a year earlier than they are when they buy a clamshell. Hmm. So, like, literally, we do thousands of interviews of people leaving the store, and we're finding when you buy a two-in-one, uh, you want to buy it versus need to buy it, right? It's not because your hard drive is broken or something you're like you're going into the store because you want to buy that and we're just trying to solve pain points yeah uh, which is fun to be at a company that's doing that right <laughs> it's also interesting to see how the two-in-one category and also the ultra books changed the traditional pc market i mean in general when it comes to clamshell design we're talking about a design that is almost 30 years old i think it was <laughs> toshiba in the mid 80s to come out with the first clamshell mm. and um so it's quite interesting to see how we are still using even though there are so many people out there constantly complaining about the pc market but at the end of the day I've never ever met someone to really try to be very productive on his smartphone with an Excel sheet or <laughs> uh, on, a, on a tablet. <laughs> We're still going back to our PCs. Actually, I moved back to a desktop in the office like one and a half years ago, and I love it. Well, I think there's no doubt that when tablets came on and had a fast run that people were extending their PC life cycles, right? Um, but then I think there was a usefulness for tablets. Yeah. Um, and can candidly, we let innovation kind of stall a little bit mm -hmm. on the PC, right? For five, six years, everything was an inch and a half thick, had a DVD drive on the side, you know, these kind of things. Yeah, and now on. you have these gorgeous edge-to-edge <laughs> -edge displays, fanless machines, yeah. um, you know, wireless WAN connectivity, if you choose to use that. So I think it's been a combination of tablets, um, you know, have a usefulness for consumption, but again, it's been very difficult for people to do creation. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, we, we as human beings create, right? We draw, we Absolutely. type, we yeah. write stories, we, uh, we we do those kind of things. And I think the PC has a has a place. You know, we've now had five consecutive quarters of year-on-year -year growth yeah. again, and I think that's just a function of um, good innovation, not just on the notebook, but also on the desktop, right? We have these new mini form factors. We just launched the compute stick that's coming out where yeah. you can literally plug yeah. into an yeah. HDMI port and light up a, an old uh, TV screen. Uh, the all-in-one and portable all-in-one categories are growing almost 20% now yeah. year on year. So um, it's that kind of innovation that's helping us because, you know, the old desktop PC used to gather dust under the office at home. Now you're starting to see all-in-ones in the kitchen, you know, and more public places of the house because they're just more beautiful devices and, and people are willing to put them, you know, outside the office. So when you're on the road, I'm pretty sure that you have your notebook with you or your ultra book or two-in-one. Yeah. And you all, are you also using a tablet or are you also using... There we go. A, it's a, a tablet. Yeah, I have a two-in-one device and then I use... Uh, today I'm using an Intel-based uh, Asus uh, Zenfone. Yeah, and uh, this is my primary device. That's I, I a personally six. I, yeah, I, I don't. Think, yeah. yeah, six inch, and I've tried all the different screen sizes. So I, I find that if I have this for kind of snacking on email, yeah. I I don't have the need specifically to carry a tablet. So I can carry my two in one for productivity. Uh, if the air, airline flight attendant tells me to put away my notebook, I just flip it around and put it in <laughs> tablet mode, and I get twenty extra uh, minutes of uh, of email reading <laughs> on the plane, and then I have the tablet here. So. I think uh, that's what we're seeing, right? Fablets are growing very, very fast, and 
you know, that's why we made the announcements we did at MWC today uh, or this week on, on the Atom X3. Yeah. Because the old Sophia line now with 3G and integrated LTE, we're going to have a, a major play in the phablet world uh, with Intel architecture. And so that, that's pretty exciting. It was our first chip that we had integrated communications and computing on the same uh, particular chip. And then our relationships with Rockchip and Spreadtrim are going to help to distribute that much faster yeah. uh, across the, the globe, especially in China. Exciting times, not only for Intel, but for the mobile world in general. And this is why it's interesting to be over here in Barcelona at the Mobile World Congress. Kirk Scoggin, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.